Right, well, thank you as well. Um, so I'd like to talk about um, a project we've had ongoing at Mozilla for the past year and a bit uh, to modernize internationalization in Gecko and SpiderMonkey. So I'm planning to speak a little bit about what internationalization is, um, go into a bit of a deeper dive about text segmentation, talk about localization in the browser, um, how all of this is implemented, uh, experimenting, some experimentation we've done with IC4X inside Firefox. IC4X is a library for internationalization that I'm going to talk about a little bit. And then also some work we have uh, ongoing and that we're looking forward to, to use IC4X for text segmentation. First, what is internationalization? Well, it's really part of a group of related ideas of internationalization, translation, localization. Um, I think it's easiest to talk about translation first because it's probably the thing that we all have a good idea of what it is. So here's a dialogue from Firefox in English, and there it is in a bunch of other languages. And that's more or less what translation is. It's, it's not necessarily easy, but at least the idea is, is easy to understand. So what's a localization? A localization is basically translation plus um, cultural adaptation, so looking beyond purely linguistic factors, things like the appropriate use of colors, symbols, images, and things like that. Um, example of this is a bug we had about uh, 12 years ago. The Mozilla support site um, was redesigned to feature a cartoon cat nurse. Um, I looked and looked, and I couldn't find the cartoon cat nurse from the redesign. I really would have liked to have seen it, but it's the best I could do. And it turned out in Japanese culture, this had some unintended erotic connotations, and it had to be hidden um, in Japan. So that's an example of something that's not a uh, linguistic concern, but it's still necessary to adapt your product to a different uh, location. Um, so internationalization to me, and I guess there's no completely accepted definition of what it is, but to me, it's the things that can be done by a computer. So things like dates and times and formatting currencies. It's something that enables localization, so it means less work for translators. And because it's done by computers, it's something that's data-driven, so there's something maintained by Unicode called the Common Locale Data Repository, um, basically a data set in XML and JSON along with a well-defined schema that contains things like how do you format all the different currencies for every supported locale. Um, here are some examples of internationalization, so things like numbering systems, um, different ways of grouping numbers, so the one on the left is you know, what it used to in the U.S. and Canada, one on the right is more what you would see in India, for instance. Um, examples of date and times in different locations, calendar systems, text segmentation, which is what I'm going to talk about in more detail later. Um, directionality, so supporting left to right and right to left languages. Uh, lists, plural rules, I'll also touch on a little bit later, and currencies. So ECMO 402 is a set of APIs that implement internationalization in JavaScript. Um, they basically, for the most part, work like the example below. So you can create a formatter by specifying locale and some options. And then the formatter provides a format method that will actually do the work. So in the first example, creating a uh, formatter for Germany for currency. So why do we care about localization and internationalization? Um, for Mozilla, it's part of our manifesto. So the internet is a global public resource that must remain open and accessible to everyone. And an English-only web is neither open nor accessible, nor Chinese, nor Spanish, or any other language. Um, so what we want to do is ensure that people are able to access the web in their own languages, which basically means localizing the browser. And we want to provide people with the tools they need to localize the web. So that's ECMA 402 support in JavaScript. So with that, I'd like to talk in a little bit more detail about text segmentation. Um, so that's uh, the process of chunking text into meaningful units. It can be done in character boundaries or in word boundaries, for example, when you're jumping from one word to another inside your text editor, or in line boundaries, so that would be things like laying out text inside a column. Um, so first example is uh, grapheme breaking, and to understand this, you need to understand the difference between a code point and a grapheme. So graphemes are essentially what is rendered to the screen. So we have here a thumbs up sign on code points and code characters, but there's not always a one-to-one -one mapping from code points to graphemes. So in this case, the thumbs up sign is actually a thumbs up sign plus a skin tone <laughs> modifier. And beyond uh, emoji, there is also uh, use cases for this in languages that add diacriticals to fonts. Um, so what does this look like? Um, basically, if it's uh, segmented according to graphemes, your thumbs up stays together. 
And if you just sort of naively split up the string into an array, you end up with uh, separate um, characters for the thumbs up and the modifier. Moving on to word breaking, uh, more or less what it sounds like, breaking on word boundaries. Um, the complexity of this really depends upon the language, so it's a lot easier when there's spaces between words and definitely more complicated for Asian languages. Here's an example from Spanish, es tan corto el amor y es tan largo el oído. Um, and that uh, gets segmented more or less the way you'd expect, and it probably could be done by anyone who's familiar with the European language without having to know Spanish. Um, here's an example of Japanese, so this is a haiku by Basho. I can't uh, read or speak Japanese, so I'm just going to let the computer do the work. And there you can see that the word boundaries aren't necessarily where you'd expect if you don't know Japanese, and it becomes a more complicated problem. So we can talk a little bit about Intosegmenter. It's a stage for a proposal for ECMA 402. It's already been implemented in Chromium and Safari. And the general use case is implementing text editors in JavaScript. Current proposal is for grapheme word and sentence breaking, but not line breaking, um, basically because to do line breaking properly, you need to have more information than just the break locations. An example of how Intosegmenter works, create a segmenter with a locale and options, much like the number format example I gave earlier. Um, use it to get an iterator for strings. So this is that same haiku by Basho. Um, then you can use that for segmentation. And results look like that, which is what I used to make that slide. Um, to back up a little bit, I'd like to talk about localization in the browser. Um, so ECMA 402 allows developers to use JavaScript to localize the web, but the browser is also a product that needs to be localized. So we ship 133 locales in Firefox when we checked, when I checked last week. And how we do that is something called uh, Project Fluent. Um, so the sort of catchphrase for it is a localization system for natural sounding translations. Um, what that really means is developers can write things in English and translators can still produce something that's appropriate for languages, even if it has grammatical features that aren't present in English. Um, from a developer point of view, basically defining strings in English and text files, and then inside Firefox, um, the translations can be declared declaratively through the DOM using attributes or programmatically through a JavaScript API. Um, for translators, we have a web app called Pontoon, so most of our translations, I believe, are still done by volunteers, and they're not necessarily technically inclined people, so we want to make this as simple as possible. Um, this is how it looks if you're trying to translate uh, string fluent. So the UI presents the English source text and allows the editor to create the target text. Um, what I wanted to point out here, though, is um, this is a translation in Lithuanian, and Lithuanian has more plural categories than in English. So this is an example of how fluent enables a grammatical feature in a target language that isn't present in the source language. Um, and the other thing you can see from that example, or maybe I went too quick, but hopefully, um, is that Fluent also localizes numbers and dates. So there's built-in functions to handle this, and these two are based upon ECMA 402 APIs. So how is all of this implemented? Um, short answer is ICU for C. Um, it's international components for Unicode, for C. There's also an ICU for J, for Java, and an ICU for X I'm going to talk about a bit more later. Um, essentially, it's enormous C and C++ library. Um, developed by IBM, it was first released in 1999, and it's used pretty much everywhere, so it's what we use at Mozilla for SpiderMonkey and Gecko, also in Chromium, WebKit, OS X, Linux, a bunch of other places. Um, it provides a lot of functionality, but it's also monolithic, so it's very hard to remove code or data that you don't want to use. It ends up being a large dependency for browsers, at least ones that don't ship for the operating system. There's also an API mismatch with ECMA 402, so there's lots of work to set up calls to handle options and to convert results. Um, so yes, I said we use IC for C inside Firefox. We actually effectively, at the beginning of last year, had three different implementations. We had one in SpiderMonkey, one in Fluent, and one in Gecko. And that meant a lot of IC for C calls scattered throughout the code base. Lots of code duplication. And then there's no guarantee of consistent results between SpiderMonkey and Gecko. So it would be possible that we'd be using different numbers, or sorry, different options to format numbers and dates um, between SpiderMonkey and Fluent, which isn't great. Um, so what we ended up doing to solve this is we moved all of our ICU calls to a single library that's usable from both SpiderMonkey and Gecko. Um, this is important because SpiderMonkey is still shipped as a separate uh, embeddable engine. Um, we developed interfaces based upon ECMA 402 to hide some of this complexity from developers, get rid of a lot of duplicated code, and 
make sure we're doing things consistently. While we were doing this, we largely used existing SpiderMonkey code just because it was extremely well tested thanks to Test262. So our results um, basically got rid of a lot of duplicated code, had almost no regressions while we were doing it, and we've enabled developers inside Firefox, potentially used a full set of ECMA 402 APIs to localize the browser, but it also means we can easily experiment with other internationalization libraries. So what other internationalization libraries? Well, the one we're interested in is called ic 4 x um, ic for x projects are re-implementation of ic for c but purposely designed around the needs of the web. It's smaller and faster. A lot of time has been spent to make sure that data is easily, easily separable and not monolithic. And the APIs are much, close, much more closely based upon ECMA 402. <laughs> Initial implementations in Rust with support for other languages through an FFI. And it's been under development uh, mostly by Google and Mozilla since 2020. And 1.0 release is planned for the end of this month. About a year ago, we ran some experiments with ic inside Firefox, or SpiderMonkey. Um, we chose four APIs, uh, number format and date format, um, because those are probably the two most significant use cases, and plurals and locale, because at that time, the implementations inside ic were the most complete. And we looked at performance, memory use, and correctness. So here's an example of our, of our results. So for date time format, um, we ended up with something that was significantly faster and was also using quite a bit less memory. So that was very, very promising for us. Um, we also ran correctness tests using test 262, but just for locale and floor rules because at the time we were doing the experiments, the implementations of number format and date time format weren't uh, really complete enough in terms of the options they supported for results to be meaningful. And we ended up with only a handful of failures mostly around locale canonicalization, which is a little painful for me because that was what I implemented. Um, but locale canonicalization is basically edge cases on top of edge cases to handle things like what regions emerge from the breakup of the Soviet Union and things like that. So it's part of the standards and needs to be done right, but um, it is kind of an edge case thing. We did see a few unexpected results. So when we were working with number format, um, the memory use was substantially worse when we were using ic for x when we dug into that a bit, we saw that what was actually happening is that because the ic for x objects were smaller, they were being um, garbage collected less frequently, and this was a side effect of our integration with SpiderMonkey. We had to estimate the size of the objects, and that changed the effect, changed that affected the behavior of the garbage collector. So it wasn't a problem with ic for x but it, is, it does sort of demonstrate how you have to be careful running these kinds of benchmarks. But overall, uh, performance and memory use are much better with IC4X, but we need to be a bit cautious of those results just because of the incomplete implementations of date time format and number format at the time. And the integration itself was a little bit hacky. Um, we're trying to move quick just to get some initial results. And we were doing things like reading data straight from the file system instead of keeping the memory properly. So that would actually suggest that we would see better performance when if we were to repeat these benchmarks, but um, we really need to do that to know for sure. And, It'd be great to do that again once the 1.0 release is out. But our results were promising enough that we decided to continue our involvement, and Mozilla focused on uh, collator development, collator that you sort uh, strings in a language um, dependent fashion, date time format, and segmenter. And uh, segmenter is what I'm going to talk about next. Um, so IC for C isn't really suitable for Firefox segmentation, and that's because our layout engine doesn't use it. Um, the reason for this is we need to adjust line breaking results according to CSS, and that ends up in a data size that's too large for us because there's a sort of a combina combinatorial uh, explosion of word break and line break combinations. Um, we could use IC for C for into that segmenter, and there is an initial implementation along those lines from a couple of years ago, but that would mean that results would be inconsistent with what layout is computing. And that's exactly what we wanted to avoid with our unification project. Um, but beyond that, segmentation is also a great use case for us. So it's not just a faster version of IC for C, like it's great to have a date time format that's faster and uses less memory, but uh, segmentation is an example of something that we can't currently do with IC for C. So that makes it a bit more exciting for us. Um, it will end up giving us consistent segmentation because there's some platform dependent bits to our layout implementation, and it guarantees um, consistent results between layout and SpiderMonkey. So we've been working on implementing segmentation in ic frex We've implemented uh, three models. Um, one's rule-based, um, based upon two algorithms defined by Unicode, 
and this is suitable for uh, relatively uh, simple languages. There's also a dictionary-based model. This is based upon looking up code points in a tree um, that's being used for Asian languages. And then Google developed some neural network-based models. Um, these are trained upon the same dictionaries I just mentioned, and these are more or less a space-time space -time, trade-off. So they're slower but require less storage. So integrating IC Rex Segmenter, planning to do that after the 1.0 release. Um, Hoping it will be straightforward. We've already refactored our layout code to have an ECMA 402-like interface, and the API surface itself is relatively small. But we still need to figure out how we're going to handle our data packaging in Firefox, which is something we didn't uh, look at in our earlier experiments. Um, once that looks good, we're going to write some micro benchmarks for word and line breaking. Um, we need to analyze the impact on our code and data size. Then we're planning to enable it for Linux nightly builds, um, behind the preference at first. Um, like I mentioned, our layout segmentation is, has some platform dependent bits. Um, Linux is currently the least functional, so it ends up being the lowest risk for us, but also the greatest uh, potential reward. And that will let us check for regressions, performance problems, and things like that. Um, once we're happy with that, um, we'll look at implementing into that segmenter. Hopefully this will be straightforward. Um, like I said, we have a work in progress version using IC4C for an older version of the spec and then we'll be able to validate it against test 262. So, conclusions. <laughs> Internationalization is important for both the browser and in JavaScript. By unifying our implementation, we've simplified our code base quite a bit, and we set ourselves up to try out new implementations. And the one we're excited about right now is trying out ic for x for text segmentation. Right. And that, I guess, stop and see if there's any questions. Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, feel free to drop your questions into the chat or, or just raise your hands if you have any. But, oh, okay. Is this better? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, d does anybody, okay. Uh, I have a bunch of questions, so <laughs> that's, that works for me. Uh, thank you for your talk, first of all. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, message format, I think. Uh, Actually, I think I left that out. <laughs> but it would have been good to mention. Yes, that's um, something we're looking, we're participating in the standardization of. So we see that as um, moving from Fluent, which has been developed and maintained by, um, by Mozilla, to something that's an industry-wide standard. And that will be good for us because then we have a bunch of people contributing to developing tools. And uh, one question that I had regarding this, which is, uh, I mean, you, you have answered it, right? Uh, you plan to put port stuff that is currently influent into message format. Uh, yeah. I, I know a bunch of other organizations also do something quite similar to Fluent. Uh, is there uh, uh, an a, a initiative, uh, I don't know, databases into the Unicode consortium? Um, do you mean for, in, in terms of like tooling to for the, enable? For the data. Or for like the CLDR data? I'm sorry, I don't quite understand your question. Yeah, uh, for the, for, to add to the CLDR data because... Uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So that's something um, I haven't really been involved in, but I think that the process can be a little bit slow, so that's, that's probably... Um, and, 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 I, and I guess it's partly slow because... I think CLDR is quite good for large and mainstream languages. And for smaller languages, um, you know, people, are, people that are pushing for it don't necessarily have the same connections or ability to get things into CLDR. So I think, yes, that would be something that would be, you know, I think web as a whole would be served well if um, we had better support for I say, minority languages or smaller languages or, you know, less commonly spoken languages. Cool, thank you. Uh, we have a question on the chat. Uh, we mentioned about using IC4X, both in SpiderMonkey and Gecko. Uh, does this mean that uh, all, this would mean that all the engines would have a common denominator uh, when it comes to the implementation of the internationalization? Um, so that's, that's, a, that's also an excellent question. Um, like we're participating in the development of this with Google. Um, at the moment, they've been uh, focusing more on other products. 
but they're very interested in um, looking at the results we see inside spider monkey and if that's promising then yes they would be interested in that but as it stands right now ic for c is kind of this common denominator it's just not necessarily the easiest thing to build upon when you're um, trying to work on something for the web uh, then there's Will it be possible to back a full ECMA 402 implementation using just IC for X 1.0? No, no, no. It's not going to be complete. So we're still missing, for example, some of the options that are supported by date time format and number format. So it's more of a minimal viable product release as opposed to a feature complete release. And that is something that came out with the correctness testing that we did is there is kind of a long tail of things that need to be fixed. So. We're trying to get something functional um, early on, but then that's actually another reason why um, for SpiderMonk we want to focus on Segmenter because it's a relatively small API and that's something that ic x with the 1.0 release will be usable for, but with things like number format and date time format, there'll be a um, longer period probably, you know, at least another six months to a year of adding features and testing before I'd be ready for that. Okay. Uh you, you, now that you mentioned Segmenta, uh, you, you also sort of hinted towards the Segmenta version 2 proposal, uh, which would eventually add word, uh, word breaking, right? Sorry, line breaking. Line breaking, yeah. Uh, I, I, I hear that there's a lot of uh, divisiveness within that proposal. Yes. Could you explain that? Yes, I, I'm not, I haven't been following it that closely, but yes, that's, that's also what, what I've heard. So I, I think there's some um, competing proposals as to how to best implement that. Um, from the Mozilla point of view, because we're going to use this in our layout engine, we need to implement line breaking anyways. So that was important to us. But yes, it's possible maybe until that segment will always just be word breaking. But for our internal purposes, we need it both. Okay. Uh, I think... Oh, yeah, we have. Uh, so did you ever talk to Apple about future integration into WebKit? Um, no, not, not, not yet so far. It's been um, just uh, Google and Mozilla, but we're hoping that um, other groups will be interested in this and contribute to it as well. OK. Uh, and then another one we have is, are you exposing ICU4X as a plain C API and then building more? Uh, idiomatic C++ bindings on top of that, or are you going to expose other languages directly on top of Rust? Um, so we have a tool called Diplomat that was written by, uh, by some people at Google, and that's code generating, um, at the moment, I think just C and C++ interfaces from a Rust uh, definition, but I believe there's plans to add Java and Swift in the, in the near future, so I, I think that is our sort of a two-pronged approach. So if it's something that Diplomat can generate directly, then you should get more idiomatic interfaces. And if that's using language that can't use Diplomat directly, you can always generate um, a CFFI and then use that to kind of make your own more idiomatic you know, interface. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any more questions? Does anybody want to? Okay, well, thank you so much, Dan, for your yeah, talk. Thank you, thank you everyone for your time.